Assalamualaikum and very good day to Dr. Zuleda and fellow friends. In this video, me and my friends would like to share about the RAM0 and its application regarding marginal access burden of taxation. Before that, shout out to the team members, Tiviana, Farhan, Wafiq and Fazil for their cooperation in brainstorming the idea of this topic. So, without wasting time, let's check it out. As we know, tax is the main source of government income and become one of government primary tools to achieve their economic and social goals. However, the government have to be equal and justice for each individual of their citizen in charging the tax rate according to their ability to pay the tax individually. Now referring to the incidence and efficiency cost to analyze and optimal design of community taxes, there is a question arise. What is the best way to design the taxes without neglecting the equity and efficiency concern? Before that, note that in designing an optimal commodity tax, there are two factors must be considered and must be balanced. The first one is elasticity rule, which is usually impose a high tax to a commodity that has low elasticity in order to maximize the government revenue. The second one is the broad-based rule, which is better to tax a wide variety of goods at lower rate in order to spread the marginal access burden, or we call it as dead weight loss. Thus, in the second factor, it suggests that all the community must be taxed, but at a different tax rate. Then, another question arises: How in the world are we able to determine these rates difference? Luckily, in 1927, a British economist and mathematician named Frank Plumpton Ramsey has developed a theory for optimal commodity taxes and leads to a rule that was named after his name, which is the Ramsey rule. The theory's goal is to minimize the marginal access burden, or we call it as the dead weight loss of a tax system while earning a fixed amount of revenues for government. To achieve that, again, most commodities need to be taxed but at a different rate level of tax. To determine the rate, the inverse elasticity rule is implemented in the Ramsey rule. They are the key assumption to the Ramsey rule model. The Ramsey rule has a few key assumptions such as lump sum tax rule is prohibited as it will bring along a well loss in terms of economic efficiency. Other than that, not all commodities can be taxed. For example, leisure is untaxed on behalf of working need to be taxed at a higher rate. Leisure is a portion of time workers and other people spend not being compensated for work performance when they actively engage in the uh, production of goods and services. In other words, this is time people are sent off the job. This includes resting at home or working around the house without compensation. Finally, production prices are fixed and are normalized to one. As we know, the Ramsey rule set tax so that the ratio of marginal debt wealth loss to marginal revenue rise to be equal across all commodities. This means that the tax rate may differ for one commodity to another, but the ratio of marginal debt wealth loss to marginal revenue rise must be the same across all commodities. For example, if this ratio for good A is higher than the ratio for good B, there is more distortion or inefficiency in market A than market B. In this case, the tax rate for good A needs to be reduced and the tax rate for good B needs to be increased until the both of the ratio is the same. We consider there are N commodities in the market in the commodities. There will be DWL1, DWL2 and so on until DWLN. The sum of that weight loss will be DWL1 plus DWL2 until plus DWLN. The constraint is R1 plus R2 which R means revenue and so on until plus Rn equal to R bar. R bar is the targeted revenue from commodity taxes the government has to recover. Now I will show you the formula on how to get lambda equals to MDWL over MR. We take the total of DWL minus total of R minus R bar with lambda as the multiplier. The first order of condition requires to differentiate delta M over delta tax. We will get delta DWL over delta tax minus lambda times delta R over delta tax equals to zero. We move lambda times delta R over to delta tax to the right, we will get delta DWL over delta tax equals to lambda times 
delta r over delta x. Then we did cross multiplication with this and we will get lambda equal to m dwl over m r with lambda being the value of additional government revenue. This will be the same across all commodities. We know that the Ramsey rule requires every commodity to have the same ratio of marginal dead weight loss over marginal revenue. However, the government should set taxes on each commodity inversely to the demand elasticity, meaning less elastic items are taxed at a higher rate. Recall the formula for dead weight loss, which is 1 over 2 times elasticity of supply times elasticity of demand divided by elasticity of supply minus elasticity of demand times tax squared times quantity over price. For a competitive market with a perfect elastic supply, we assume that elasticity of supply is infinity and we normalize prices equals to 1. Therefore, we get DWL equals to negative 1 over 2 times elasticity of demand times tax squared times quantity and we will get marginal dead weight loss elasticity demand times tax times quantity. Therefore, we will get tax rate equals to negative 1 over elasticity of demand times with lambda which is the inverse elasticity rule. Well, we know now that inverse elasticity means goods with low elasticity demand will be taxed at a higher rate while goods with a high elasticity demand will be taxed at a lower rate. This is because the goal of the Ramsey rule is to minimize dead weight loss of a tax system while raising a fixed amount of revenue. As we can see from the graph, goods with an inelastic demand have a smaller dead weight loss. Therefore, the government will set higher taxes on items with inelastic demand, while for items with an elastic demand have bigger dead weight loss. So the government will set lower tax rate for items with an elastic demand. As we can see, inelastic demands are usually necessity goods. Who enjoys them? Well, everyone includes those who are of low income. Meanwhile, elastic demands are usually luxury goods and are enjoyed by exclusively high income earners. Is it fair to tax in elastic goods like food and medicine? The answer is no. Therefore, vertical equity is taken into consideration where high earners pay more income tax and low earners pay less income tax to account for distribution issues. Ramsey rule also depends on how much society cares about equity and the extent to which consumption pattern of rich and poor differ. Deaton 1997 found that the Pakistan government was paying subsidies for wheat and rice and was collecting taxes on oils and fats. The table in the slides show the subsidies generate over consumption of wheat and rice and led to particularly large efficiency losses for rice. The tax on oils and fats also generate dead weight loss. Using a framework similar to Ramsey's that would increase efficiency and be revenue neutral, Deaton suggested to reduce the tax on oils and fats and make up for the lost tax revenues by reducing the subsidies to rice and wheat. However, Deaton also found that the distributional considerations might offset some of these conclusions. Wheat and fats and oils were consumed quite heavily by the poor, but rice was consumed fairly evenly throughout the income distribution. This suggests not to decrease the wheat subsidy on equity grounds. This is all from us. Thank you.